Don't do the crime if you can't do the time. That's the old saying, right? But most criminals seem to live without thinking about the consequences. Today, we're looking at the criminals who somehow thought the judge would let him go. You do a murder of my son, man, for nothing? When he was trying to get away from you? Spoiler alert, they don't. From a literal gagging order to a guy who decided to cause a scene, let's see the 20 craziest reactions of convicts after given a life sentence. <sighs> Number 20. Franklin Williams Pretty sure we all know one of those people who would just be better off if they shut the heck up. Franklin Williams was definitely one of those people. Luckily for the world, one Cleveland judge knew just how to handle people like this. Get ready to take some tips. In 2018, Franklin Williams appeared in court to face charges including aggravated robbery and kidnapping. But no matter how hard the judge tried to continue with his job, Williams just couldn't seem to stop talking. I'm the judge in the matter. Shut your mouth and I'll tell you when you can talk. Even after he was asked to stop, frustrated by the constant interruptions, Judge John Russo decided he had to take unprecedented action, ordering his deputies to put red tape over the defendant's mouth. It wouldn't surprise you to find out that Williams did not react well to this act of silencing. In fact, he began shouting out, freedom of speech, duct tape, and hashtag on his way out of the court. This is how this convict reacted after hearing his sentence. The incident, of course, went viral very quick, and the judge found himself forced to defend his unconventional and questionable actions. Eventually, the whole thing reached ahead, with the judge apologizing and recusing himself from the case entirely. I guess he misunderstood what the words gagging order meant, eh? Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Anthony Rodriguez There are really only two ways to react to a prison sentence. You can take it like a grown-up and accept what you did was wrong, or you can cause a massive scene and claim that you didn't do it or that the whole thing is rigged against you. Most people tend to choose that second one. In 2012, Anthony Rodriguez raped a young woman in Bakersfield, California, later claiming that he was innocent of the allegation and did no such thing. DNA evidence, however, linked him to the crime and ensured that he was arrested shortly afterwards. When he made it to the court three months later, Anthony was found guilty and sentenced to 25 to life in prison. He took it about as well as you would expect, claiming that the judgment was unfair before hurling curse words at the judge and his bailiffs, because why not tick everybody off before you go and spend your life staring at a wall? When the news broke of Rodriguez's sentencing, his family was heartbroken. Even though Rodriguez had a life history of violent and aggressive behavior, often getting arrested, he had never committed a sexual offense. That this was his first time, they argued, was enough of a reason to be more lenient with the ruling. Yeah, they truly believed that. Number 18. The Laughing Killer You have to be a special kind of psychopath to murder somebody and then find joy in the devastating heartbreak of that person's parents. But sadly, this world is full of those kinds of psychopaths, and we have one of the most well-known examples of recent times right here. This kid murdered Jordan Klee, a high-achieving football player and high school student, and at no point did he show any remorse about that. In fact, for months, he had turned up at all legal hearings with a smile on his face, a sense of joy that he had actually done it. I just want to tell y'all, I'll be home soon, RRP Keon, I love my family. But when it came time for a sentencing, well, it didn't go too well. As the victim's family members read their heartbreaking words and statements expressing their devastation, the murderer sat and smiled. At times, he almost started laughing at the whole thing. It's a sick, twisted sight to see, and the judge agreed. When it came time to address the sentencing, the judge turned and asked the prosecutors if the sentencing agreement was too lenient. After all, this guy had sat and smiled his way through the heartbreaking words 
words of the family members. The judge suggested that he could simply not accept the agreement, send the issue to court, and probably land him in prison for the rest of his life. Something tells me the murderer wasn't laughing so much all of a sudden. Number 17. Man Breaks Down it's kinda crazy to see how many people appear to be utterly clueless as to what happens when you blatantly murder somebody. What do they think will happen? You get a slap on the hand? A free meal at Dave & Buster's? Come on, man. In November 2013, this man tried to rob Portia Brooks and her boyfriend, Aaron Martin. The whole thing quickly went south, however, as he ended up shooting both of them. Brooks sadly died after several days in the hospital, while Martin survived with serious long-term health effects. Thankfully, police found the man responsible and brought him in for sentencing. After a difficult and highly emotional trial, the judge and jury came to a pretty simple conclusion. This guy did murder them, and he should face the full weight of the law for doing so. But even then, when it came time for the murderer to argue his case, he just couldn't do it. Instead of claiming he wasn't responsible or finding some crazy excuse, the guy broke down in tears and apologized, but showed no real remorse. The tears didn't change a thing, however. The judgment ruled that the murderer would go to prison for life without parole, and the murderer fully breaks down into tears. Somehow, he just didn't realize that murdering people is bad. Number 16. Man Acts Insane Do you remember those old posters with the kitschy slogans? They would say, you don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. Turns out that doesn't really apply when it comes to life in a courtroom. Here, craziness is kind of discouraged, but hey, that doesn't stop people from trying. This guy was arrested and arraigned on murder and weapon charges, and to most legal experts, the case seemed pretty open and shut. Until the guy walked through the door, and then absolutely nothing seemed clear, and then absolutely nothing seemed clear, walked through the door, and then absolutely nothing seemed clear. And that includes the question of whether he's putting it on or not. From the second guy entered the courtroom, his behavior was unusual, off-putting, and frankly terrifying. He's one of those people who has the crazy look in his eye, like he could do something insane at any moment. Obviously, the guy was hoping to go for an insanity defense. There's just one problem. The guy seemed to comprehend and respond to every question perfectly. Even more frustrating for him, I'm sure, nobody seemed to pay any attention to his performance. They remained strictly focused on their own jobs, and in case you're wondering, his insanity plea didn't work. He was sentenced to life in prison without parole for his crimes. So even insanity doesn't pay. Number 15. Teen Praise it's honestly shocking how many murders are committed by family members upon their own. This 17-year-old, Jacob Morgan, is one of them. Like many murders, a series of bad decisions led him to this moment, sitting in court, trying to defend the actions that ended up killing his baby brother. In March 2015, Jacob Morgan's 14-month baby brother died in a devastating fire at their home. According to the investigation, prosecutors believed that the blaze started when Morgan set fire to a blanket in his brother's bedroom. But since he was first arrested, Morgan's parents refused to believe that Jacob could have done such a thing. After all, it was Jacob who wanted a brother all along. Months later, Jacob went to court for a probable cause hearing, where he was again accused of intentionally and maliciously starting the fire that killed his brother. Jacob was devastated, insisting that he didn't do the crime of which he was accused. When the judge sentenced him to 15 years in prison, Jacob began crying and praying. And then leave the residence standing outside watching it burn. I think most people watching this video will conclude that he didn't do it, or at least that he didn't do it on purpose. If you're one of those people, we can tell you this. At the time of this video, Jacob is scheduled to be released in 2022. We just have to hope he gets the support he needs. Number 14. A Mother's Reaction 
A good mother wants what's best for her children, but what happens when your child commits a serious crime? Do you hope that your child remains free, albeit dangerous? Or do you hope for justice, even though your child will be locked up forever? It's not the most straightforward question to answer, right? When 18-year-old Keandria Cook was arrested in Daytona Beach, her mom probably wasn't thrilled. Keandria had used a dating app to set up a carjacking that ended with the shooting of another teen. That's not just a bad decision, that's a series of catastrophically misjudged decisions. When she got to court, she was faced with charges of carjacking and battery. Eventually, the judge announced the final sentence, but the girl's mother's howls of grief were so loud that it couldn't even be heard within the courtroom. When he repeated the sentence, it's easy to understand why her mother was so upset. 20 years for carjacking, 15 years for attempted carjacking with a deadly weapon, and 15 years for a battery felony. That's 50 years behind bars. Obviously, this is the kind of thing that no mother wants for her child, but hey, as the old saying goes, don't do the crime if you don't want to finish the rhyme. And I don't want to finish the rhyme, which is why I haven't tried to rob anybody. See how that works? Number 13. Father Confronts Son's Killer Courtrooms can be tough places to be if you're the parent of the victim. Having to watch the person that needlessly murdered your child attempt to wriggle off the hook for their actions, it's not easy. Sometimes it can be enough to trigger pure white-hot rage, and who can blame them? In 2012, nightclub security guard Lucas Kendall shot and killed Kaiwan Bird. The case immediately became a big deal in the United States raising questions about who should be allowed to own a gun and the training standards for armed guards. When it came time for sentencing in 2014, Kendall claimed that he should not serve life in prison for the killing on an insanity plea. He argued that he should be transported to a mental institution instead. This was enough to trigger a rage-filled outburst from Bird's father, who screamed, You murdered my son, man, for nothing! You murdered my son, man, for nothing?! He was trying to get away from you. You kept shooting him in the back, and his back was turned to you. Eventually, the judge ordered that Mr. Bird be removed from the courtroom. The guard allowed him to say what he had to say, but ultimately had to follow orders and dragged Mr. Bird outside. I don't think anybody could blame him for letting his thoughts be known. In fact, I imagine most of us would do the same thing. Number 12. Victim's Father Attacks Killer all things considered, it's pretty surprising that we don't hear of physical altercations in the court all that often. It seems like the kind of tinderbox where that could happen pretty easily. Well, we have an example of somebody who really did take that chance when it presented itself. In 2016, Michael Madison arrived in an Ohio court to face some pretty serious charges. Madison, a convicted sex offender, killed three people and wrapped their bodies in garbage bags. Yeah, not kidding when I said serious. Van Terry, the father of one victim, came to present a victim impact statement, but then he saw Madison offering him a particularly sinister smile. Well, that was more than enough to trigger Terry, who took the chance to lunge at the psychopath. Immediately, the courtroom descended into chaos as security and sheriff's deputies scrambled to get Terry under control as Madison and his attorneys got out of the way. The father was escorted out of the courtroom, and the judge was finally free to give her sentence. Madison was sentenced to death for his crimes, bringing some semblance of justice to those affected by his actions. The father, meanwhile, didn't have any charges pressed against him, which is something we can all be happy about. Number 11. Drunk Driver Cries If you ever need yet more proof that drinking and driving is a terrible idea, look no further than the story of 22-year-old Jordan Fuss. This guy made one bad decision and ended up losing quite a lot of his life in the process. In 2014, Jordan Fuss got into a car under the influence. Unsurprisingly, he got into a devastating car crash, but the collateral damage was much worse than he could have expected. Driving at high speeds, he split a car in two, killing a 
six-year-old boy in the back. When he finally went to court in 2017, he was visibly scared, uncontrollably shaking, and looked like he was seconds from crying. His attorney did his best to try and protect Fuse from prison, expressing the intense remorse his client felt, even revealing that he's contemplated suicide. So sorry. However, none of this worked, with the judge ultimately handing down a sentence of 14 years in prison for the unintentional killing. Despite his many apologies to the family, Fuss will miss out on his 20s and 30s due to one bad decision. Meanwhile, the Geraldo family has lost a beloved member of their family. If there's more of an argument to be made for why drunk driving is such a bad idea, I can't think of it right now. Number 10. Too Drunk to Care Social media is arguably the most notable invention of the 21st century. Not only does it bring us all closer together, but it's also a great way to keep track of all your worst thoughts, takes, and decisions. Kayla Mendoza certainly has a few of those, like the time she tweeted too drunk to care, and then killed two women while drunk driving on the wrong side of the road in South Florida. Yeah, I'd say that's a pretty terrible decision, wouldn't you? When she appeared in court in 2015, 15, the self-proclaimed pothead princess took the opportunity to appeal to the judge to reduce her prison sentence from 24 years to just 10. Mendoza pleaded with the judge to let her be involved in Mothers Against Drunk Driving, with the victim's mothers hoping to show people the dangers and devastating consequences of drunk driving. Nothing that I say or do will ever change what happened and I will never bring the back. She also offered to take substance abuse classes and any amount of probation or community control. One of the victim's mothers expressed anger and dismay at the plea, and the judge pretty much dismissed it outright. After all, if she really wants to show the consequences of drunk driving, just go to prison for the killing of two innocent people. Pretty much as good a demonstration of the consequences as you can get. Number 9. 14-Year-Old Killer Cries what kind of monster do you have to be to murder your own great-grandmother? Well, you're looking at him. Antonio Barbo somehow found it within himself to murder his 78-year-old great-grandmother. The judge described it as the most horrific crime he had to rule on in a 24-year career. Antonio Barbo and his friend Nathan Pop were found guilty of the killing, which took place inside his great-grandmother's home. When she turned her back after after inviting them in, they murdered her with a hatchet. I'm a cold, heartless, care, careless killer. When Barbo slipped out to throw up, Pop finished the job with a hammer. The judge said it was nothing short of horrific, and it didn't take much consideration to come up with a sentence. The judge sentenced the 14-year-old boy to 36 years in prison, which seems kind of light considering the extremities of the crime, but it will mean that Barbo will not be eligible for parole until he's 50 years old. After the sentencing, Barbo read an apologetic statement, but couldn't get through it without sobbing. Eventually, his attorney had finished the statement, but even he couldn't stop crying. It was for nothing, of course. The judgment didn't change, and Barbeau was sent to start his long prison sentence. Number 8. 160 Years in Prison there are probably many cases on this list that seem to get away with very short sentences. This is not one of those. Ryan Stone's terrible decisions landed him in some especially hot water, and it doesn't seem his problems are going away in this lifetime. Maybe not even in the next. In 2014, Ryan Stone stole a Ford Focus from outside a gas station in Colorado. Inside the car, there was a four-year-old car. Stone fled through Longmont before before crashing the car into a minivan on the interstate. Then he abandoned the car and stole the van, dragging the driver out by her legs. A police chase soon kicked up and Stone hit a state trooper, breaking his legs, and then crashed into many more cars before fleeing on foot. Eventually, he was arrested after the chase brought in 12 different law enforcement agencies for backup. When he was brought to court, Stone faced many charges, including attempted manslaughter, assault, child abuse, and car theft. The judge took none of this lightly, sentencing Stone to 160 years in prison, confirming that he will indeed die behind bars. Stone, for his part, continued to laugh that he felt like he was in a video game. Unfortunately, it's game over for him. 
Number 7. Man Yells at Judge If there's one thing you should just never ever do when you're in court, it's shout at the judge. I mean, come on, that's just common sense 101. Apparently not everybody knows that. This guy decided he just had to give the judge a piece of his mind. And he got a piece right back. To be fair, Manson Bryant is not new to the courtroom. His criminal record goes all the way back to 1999, when he was what judges refer to as a juvenile. He's also been to prison at least three times, so he's familiar with how things tend to go, which just makes this more baffling. Bryant was being sentenced for a home invasion, and he almost got himself off the hook. The judge had initially sentenced Bryant to over 20 years in prison, but he felt the defendant had shown remorse for his actions. Then Bryant started screaming obscenities at the judge and pretty much undid the whole thing. Court determines that you have or will have the ability to pay restitution. The, the judge changed his mind, adding another six years onto the sentence and sentencing Bryant to maximum imprisonment. 28 years. Bryant didn't stop with his tirade, yelling and screaming until deputies eventually forcibly removed him. Let this be a lesson if you don't already know. Screaming and abusing the judge will not end well for you. It's like heckling a comedian. You're not gonna win. Number 6. Man Lashes Out and here we have yet another example of why it's a truly terrible idea to start attacking or lashing out at a judge. In this case, however, the guy had pretty much no chance of wriggling off the hook due to the severity of his crimes. Sharon Lawson and her husband are truly good Samaritans who have dedicated their lives to caring for disabled and abused children. In 2017, they began fostering the baby boy of Eric Penland, who had recently been convicted of child abuse. To be more specific, he shook the child so violently that the three-month-old suffered traumatic brain damage I've been falsely accused. And a broken neck that left him hearing impaired, almost blind in both eyes, and unable to hold his own head up. But Penland insisted that he was innocent of all charges, that he never harmed his child. However, Penland has quite a lengthy criminal record, including convictions for robbery and a federal firearms charge, as well as a total lack of remorse for any of his crimes. So naturally, when the jury found him guilty, the judge took the opportunity to sentence Penland to 11 years behind bars. Penland responded by swearing and lashing out at the judge. Spoiler alert, he still went to prison. Number 5. Crocodile Tears There's a special place in hell for people who murder or abuse others and then attempt to get away with it. Jeffrey McDonald had the nerve to stand in front of his girlfriend's family and cry crocodile tears of regret. It didn't work. McDonald had beaten Alyssa Johnson, his girlfriend, to death in their home. He then took a photograph of the body that deeply disturbed the judge and left without calling 911. When he did call, it was hours later. As a result, the judge was not merciful to McDonald, ripping him apart in front of a courtroom filled with Alyssa's relatives. He was called a coward, admonished for his crocodile tears, and told that he didn't have an ounce of decency in your body. All of which, of course, is absolutely true. The judge eventually ruled that McDonald would be sentenced to up to 12 years behind bars. He went on to stress how disturbed McDonald was, highlighting the one of the most disturbing photos he's ever had to see. The judge told McDonald that he was depraved and despicable, ending with a brutal and very accurate line, Alyssa Johnson is dead because you, Mr. McDonald, are a coward. You are a coward. That sums up the Truth hurts, man. Number 4. Basketball Star Collapses An appearance in court is obviously a high adrenaline situation for anybody, but this high school basketball star had a much worse time of it than even he expected, because he wasn't conscious for a portion of it. Tony Farmer had his whole life ahead of him at just 18 years old, 6'7 tall, and ranked among the top 100 high school basketball players in the United States. Farmer was being recruited by several major colleges. His future was bright, and then he made a critical, life-changing mistake. He kidnapped, assaulted, and threatened his ex-girlfriend. Those bad decisions quickly caught up with him, and he soon found himself in a courtroom, hearing his sentence for the first time. 
then everything went a little bit fuzzy. When the judge officially sentenced him to three years in prison, Farmer looks to his lawyer in disbelief, and then collapses. For a second, Farmer remains on the floor before a sheriff's deputy helps him up. Uh, orders that the defendant shall serve a term of two years on that Oof. count as well. It's clear why Farmer was so shocked by the result. His future, which was once so bright, is now looking pretty grim. All he had to do was be mature and let his ex-girlfriend go about her life. What a bad choice. Number 3. Two Women Collapse Another collapsing story, guys. Is this down to some kind of poor ventilation in the courtroom? Eh, probably not. It likely has more to do with the fact that these two women committed a truly horrific crime and are now facing the justice they hope to escape. Karma always wins. In Charleston, Erica May Butts and Shanita Latrice Cunningham were summoned to court to receive sentencing for beating a toddler to death in 2009. But the pair who seemed to think they would have gotten away with a short sentence were stunned to discover that they had been sentenced to life in prison for their actions. The news came as such a shock that the pair collapsed, wailed uncontrollably, and hyperventilated. As clerks searched for EMTs, others in the courtroom did their best to get their breathing under control. But eventually, the pair had to be carried into wheelchairs and removed from the courtroom. As if all of this wasn't chaotic enough, one of the girl's mothers was screaming at the clerks to help her daughter. The women were taken care of, but they were then transported to prison, where they're currently serving life sentences. And I'm sure they're still just as surprised as ever for some inexplicable reason. Number 2. Man Struggles With Deputies If you get all your life knowledge from dramas, then you'll probably know that drug deals usually end up with someone dying. Well, that's pretty much what happened here, too. When a 2012 drug deal went wrong, Adrian Dunn shot Rakeem Charles to death. In 2018, it was finally time to sentence Dunn for his crimes, but while some fireworks should certainly have been expected at the end of the trial, I don't imagine anybody really expected it to be this dramatic. Due to his long criminal record, which included possession of an illegal weapon and shooting of others, Dunn was pretty much guaranteed a life sentence. But Dunn really didn't take the news well. He lashed out at the judge with some pretty intense profanities before deputies came to remove him from the courtroom. A lot of deputies, because obviously Dunn wasn't ready to just walk out, so he was dragged out, struggling the whole time, because hey, it wouldn't be a day in court if there wasn't a little drama, right? Eventually, however, the drama had to end, and Dunn was transported to serve his life sentence. Odds on him being better behaved now? I'm gonna take a wild swing and say, probably not. Number 1. Man Curses at Judge Again, I don't think we can stress enough how bad an idea it is to hurl obscenities at the judge deciding your sentence. And yet, so many people seem intent on doing just that. Spoiler alert, it never works out well for him. James Wasson was in a boot courtroom for several felony offenses. In fact, his criminal record is very lengthy, almost all of it dealing with drug-related offenses and probation violations. But even then, the guy didn't seem to learn any major lessons. When he was handed a 35-year sentence for his violations, Wasson responded by swearing at the judge. The outburst then escalated to a pretty violent act of standing up. The deputies soon pushed him back down and had to hold him as he struggled against them. So yeah, I guess you could say that the guy was less than happy about the whole thing. Eventually, the deputies managed to get Wasson under control and successfully removed him from the courtroom. Of course, nobody was hurt and the judge's ego was probably unharmed by the whole thing. But somewhere, James Wasson is serving a prison sentence and he's not happy about it. In fact, he's probably still cursing at the people left and right, which again is is a bad idea, unless you're in a study about cursing, in which case, uh, probably what you have to do. Which of these reactions do you think was the craziest? Let us know in the comments. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now. See you next time.